This is part two in a series on Pro Tools. This one covers the arrange window and shortcuts to make your workflows and life faster in Pro Tools. There's also part one that dealt with the mixer on the same topic. Thanks for watching. I'd like to discuss some stuff in the arrange window now. The first thing is fairly simple, but it is handy to use it a lot. Just double clicking any region to select the whole entire region instead of say using the selector tool and going like that or hitting command A, which all work, but just another option. Next, select any area that you want to cut, highlight it, and hit Command D, and that chops it. And then you can get rid of that. Say I don't want that little clip there in a session, you know, in the session. It's pretty convenient. You know, for instance, say this is a track, and I, I want to now export this to someone else, say they're in Logic or Ableton to mix it. So we're gonna highlight the whole thing. We're gonna hit Command A because it's not a continuous file. So if I double click, you gotta click three times to do that. So I'd rather just hit Command A. And we're gonna consolidate this file. So the shortcut for that is Shift Option 3 while selected, and you get a brand new file. Now, say you want to export this out of Pro Tools. So instead of bouncing it, since it's just a stereo file, all you have to do is make sure it's highlighted and hit Shift Command K, and you get this export selected dialog. And you pretty much select where you want to do it. I'm actually going to do desktop. And the shortcut to go to desktop when you're in Ms. Windows is Command D, and it'll and then you hit Enter, which will then then you hit export, and then it will export to the desktop. Super simple, but when I'm tuning vocals and stuff like that, I tend to use that a lot. Um, the next key is, for instance, if I delete, let me delete a piece here real quick, make a new file. Say I wanted to delete unused files in my clip bin, which is right here. It used to be called the region list, I believe. So there's shortcuts to do that as well. First, you're gonna hit Shift Command U, then Shift Command B, and now we're just gonna hit delete. What that basically did is, it, you know, it found all the unused tracks. And now it's asking if you want to remove all the all those tracks. I'm gonna hit delete. Now, of course, it's a good idea to have your session backed up before you do this, so you have a se second copy that's untouched. But for example purposes, this works, and now our session is clean with just the two items that are in our session showing up in the clips list. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the end key, which is right here. Now, what this is, is insertion follows playback. Now, when that means is when this key is on, the playback continues from where you left off. And what it's off, it continues and stays at your current playback location. So it's good for punching in at the same spot and doing takes. Let's just try it out. So we're gonna hit N and let's see how it works. So with insertion follows playback on, you see it's just continuing from, from where I leave off. Now I'm gonna hit N again, which is a shortcut for that. And you'll see it went off there. Now it's gonna keep playing back every time from this spot. So it doesn't matter how far I go, it's gonna always bounce back to that spot. So it's basically staying at the same location, no matter what, which is great. The next thing I'd like to discuss are these Zoom kind of presets over here. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can actually set these how you want. If you have certain Zoom kind of styles you like, say you want, like to zoom in sometimes at a certain size or zoom out on a certain size, you can pretty much do that You know, with the R and T keys. That's also zoom in and out always, horizontal zoom in and horizontal zoom out. It's something I use a lot as well. So for instance, say I like this, how, how far you know this is zoomed in. So you can hit the command key, hold it down, and then click preset one. And let's just click office for a second to make sure it switches. Now, if I go back to preset one, it's gonna be exactly that amount of zoom, which is really handy. And you, could pro you, and you could program all of them to how you like. One other thing I use a lot when editing, especially, is going up and down a track. I don't like having to click like this if I don't need to. So say you're at the top track here, right? Now, if you select the P and semicolon keys on your keyboard, and these what these are actually do shortcut wise um, is they enable you to go up and down a track like so instead of you having to click off and it keeps your location and everything so say you know say i want to paste this snare drum here right so i want to paste it here and then i want to paste it on every track at the same spot for whatever reason that's super easy instead of me having to click here pasting and then clicking here pasting clicking here and pasting and actually i'm not even in grid mode so they're all off so by using the p and semicolon keys it makes that super fast for editing and you know, pacing parts around, stuff like that. Now, the last thing I'd like to discuss is clip gain, which is a feature that I love, especially when editing breaths or just clip you know, volumes and automation and Pro Tools. So there's one step I'd like to show you before the clip gain shortcut. We're gonna go to preferences, and then we're gonna go to editing. And you see here, it says clip gain nudge value. So pretty much on a shortcut I'm about to show you, this is like telling it how much you wanna nudge it up or down dB wise. And I have mine set at a dB, but you could set it however you like. And so that's set pretty good. If you don't want it, that switches to something else. Some people do half dB, some people do way more. It really depends on your task. So now to actually see this in action, let's grab a file. 
and I hit E to zoom that in real quick. Say I want this file up a dB, I can go here at the bottom of that little fader and clip it up a dB. Now, what if I want to use a shortcut for that? So there's a great shortcut. It's control shift and the up or down arrows, depending if you want to make it louder or lower. So let's, let's do that right now. So we're going to go control shift, hold those down. And now with the up or down arrow, you see it's going, now it's going louder. That's pretty loud. It's probably peaking by now. And let's go back down with the bottom, with the, you know, the lower arrow. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching these. And this is part two in my tutorial. The first one is on the mixer. And also make sure that, you know, for a lot of these, you'll need the AZ on for shortcuts. So just have that in mind. If you see that off, some stuff might not work.